Hi everyone, welcome to my first flat update and my first flat bet of the 2020 series. Now I've always done my videos on Cheltenham, Cheltenham Anti Post. I usually have a bank for Cheltenham of uh, £400 and I put Anti Post bets off and bets just uh, before the festival starts and uh, they've been very successful. The reason for not doing flat bets in the previous three seasons is that my work in the summer is uh, too hectic to be uh, making videos catching all the forum you so many night meetings uh, afternoon meetings it's hard to keep track of the forum and I, I wouldn't like to put any bets up that I wasn't very confident about so we've made a profit on the three Cheltenham festivals and I'm going to have a go this season at the flat season of 2020 because basically my job I'm not doing my job and I probably won't be doing it for the whole summer I tend to watch more of the top class racing rather than the mundane stuff. So on the jumps, I would I wouldn't really be looking at the everyday Tuesday meetings at Font. Well, I'd be looking at the top class races with a view to the festival. And um, it's similar on the flat. While I would watch lower class flat races, I think the more top class racing you're watching and not you post uh, bets that you're trying to strike. Uh, I think that is where the value can be had. So today I'm going to talk about what I've seen in the previous uh, five weeks, basically on the top class racing. But I mean, there have been absolutely fabulous winners. Last week's winner, uh, Ascot Art Power, wasn't really in a top class race, but it looks like it could be a top class horse. Horses have uh, gone forward this season um, and um, outrun where you would have normally thought they would be at this stage in their careers. I'm talking about really Lord North, who won the Cambridgeshire last season, um, went forward a lot. He He's um, looking like a, a Group 1 performer now. Um, Fanny Logan, similarly, is, is looking like that as well. And um, there's been some great classic wins for Siskin. Um, in particular, I think, was uh, probably the most impressive uh, winner of the 2000 guineas in Ireland. Love and uh, British 1000 was very impressive as well, but I'm not convinced by that race and I'm also not convinced by the Irish 1000 really. Um, the horse who I was extremely taken with was um, English King um, for the Derby. He's no price and um, I wouldn't recommend a bet on him, but I'm excited to see what he can do I, I feel this horse could be a superstar and I, people will look at my bet and think well English King could go to the St Ledger I, he could go to the St Ledger but my thinking about him is that if he wins the English Derby he's more likely to be an Arc de Triumph horse than a St Ledger horse the worry would be if he powers through the line in second or third that he will go to the St Ledger but my bet on today's video, um, I'll go on to a few horses that I've found eye-catching after, apart from English King. I, I really have liked English King, uh, and I won't uh, be swaying away from him in the Derby, but I'll talk about a couple of Derby horses that could be overpriced, and I'll talk about a couple of horses who were beaten, uh, ask it who I think may be horses to follow for the season. But firstly, I'll give you the bet, and it is in the St. Ledger, and it's on a horse called uh, Santiago of Aidan O'Brien's, who's 8-1 to one the Ladbrokes and Corals. Now, if I was having a bank, I would probably put £50 win of the bank of 400 Now, you'd adjust your bank to what you... Uh, your stakes, if your bank was only going to be 100 then you'd obviously put um, an eighth of 100 so £12.50 on the horse. Now, he's 8-1 to one the Ladbrokes and Corals, and I think that's way over the odds I'd have him at. I'd actually only have the horse up at 92.5 to 1. He's won the Queen's Vaz first time out. He was impressive. He may back up and go for the Irish Derby. It's very quick turnaround in eight days, but he may go for that race. And that's the reason I'm going to put him up now. In case he goes for that race and wins, I think his price will collapse for the St. Ledger. He may not be quick enough for a one mile four race, but he was certainly quick enough to win the Queen's Vaz in very, very impressive uh, style, I thought he was very good um, 
it augurs well. He stayed the distance very well. And he ticks all the boxes, really. He's um, can he win? He's already won a great uh, group two. Will he run? I would say almost certainly he will go to the St. Legend. I mean, you can never be sure, but I would say uh, it's the most likely target for him at the end of the season, unless he proves to be top class at one mile four and he may go for the arc but I would see him going for the St. Ledger. Is he value? I think he is. I think he's quite a few points above what where I'd have him. And and I would walk over hot coals to bet him at eight to one. In fact I found it very difficult to place my bet at eight to one but I have got money on him now. I'm hoping that a couple of friends can get a bit more on. It's very difficult to get bets on in Scotland. There's no bookmakers open and uh, it's um, a case of having to have accounts. I certainly don't have accounts in Ladbrokes or Corals so I'm having to try and get a few quid on here and there um, with friends. But he's certainly a bet for me. I think he um, is overpriced and his win over 1 mil 6 in the Queen's Falls is very impressive. Like I've said, I've been very taken to English King. He'd certainly be my selection for the English Derby, but he's no value whatsoever, and he certainly is not a bet at the prices of 5 to 2 and 11 to 4. Much as I see he could be a potential superstar, I'm not interested in that price at all. I think he's probably more like a 5 to 1 shot in my book. And uh, the prices um, are very... Uh, skewed towards him um, Frankie de Tori being on him uh, made his price contract more there are prices in the derby that are seem short and then there's horses that seem big I, I think Kamiko to me looks a one mile two horse and I wouldn't be interested in him he's very short military march uh, I, I don't buy this idea that he was running on I don't think he was catching um Two short runners in Wichita and Pinatubo and um, for me he's very short as well. I think the ones who are a bit big are Russian Emperor who's probably two three points too big at um, 10 11 to 1 and also Pile Driver who's bigger priced than Mogul even though he's thrashed Mogul. Now he did have the benefit of a run and Mogul didn't but it's a big turnaround to think that Mogul can turn up for him round and also be good enough to win the derby but he's only 12 to 1 whereas pile driver 16s and 20s on the exchanges so there is a big discrepancy in those prices Um, the one other horse who i looked up for a bet the price contracted yesterday it's very difficult like i said to get bets off and then um, the price on hamish for the ebor um has contracted from 14 to 1 to 10 to 1 and uh, that sort of price this distance away from the race and i wasn't interested in backing him in a handicap where I don't know the rivals he's likely to face and although I thought he ran an absolutely great starting race for the season um, 10 to 1 really isn't big enough to tempt me in the two horses I want to talk about who I were eye catchers for me um, I don't want to talk too much about the ride but I would say if you can have a look at the run of Blue Mist in the Silver Woking in last Saturday. I think he'll win a big handicap. I think he didn't get the run of the race, and let's not talk about the ride he was given. Um, hopefully it can be put right later in the season. I think he's a good horse going forward. So that's Blue Mist out of the Silver Woking in Ascot on Saturday. And um, also on Saturday was Cadem of Charlie Hills in the Diamond Jubilee. I think when he gets faster ground and a flat or six furlongs, he'll be a very, very good sprinter going forward. And I'm looking forward to seeing him. But for now, out of a bank of, um, if I was having a mythical bank of £400, I would have £50 to win Santiago for the St. Ledger at 8 to 1. And he'd be my bet going forward. I'm very excited to watch English King in the Derby. I think he has the looks of a potential superstar, but it could be very wrong. Like I say on these videos, every time I make them, these are my views and not everyone is going to agree. I like to put them up so I have a record of what I've thought and how I'm doing going forward during the season. So the first bet, £50 win, Santiago, 8-1, to 
the Ladrix and Corals for the St. Ledger. I'll be back to you probably after the Derby and we'll have a look at some of the other big races and maybe have an anti-post bet. Thanks for watching today and bye for now.